Okay, next comes the audio interface. Mine is actually hidden just behind the keyboard here, and this could be considered the heart of the system. The audio interface is the device that allows you to get real instruments onto a track in the door on the computer. The audio interface converts the analog signals from say an electric guitar or a bass guitar or microphone into a digital audio file that ends up on one of the tracks in the door. In this case, Logic Pro. There are many things to consider when choosing an audio interface, such as how many inputs you might need, the quality of the analog to digital converters, the quality of the preamps and their noise floor, how much microphone gain it has, the build quality, the display, and the accuracy of the record level meters, how many headphone sockets you might need, and so on and so forth. Most home recording studios won't be recording an entire band and drummer all at the same time, so the need for endless inputs usually won't be required. Fact is, most home recording studios only ever record one instrument or one vocalist at a time, so just one input will usually suffice, but having a couple more can come in handy sometimes. Likewise for the headphone sockets, many audio interfaces only have one headphone socket, unless you start to go up in price of course. Again, most people will typically only ever need one single headphone socket, but there are times when you might need two or more. For example, if you have a singer come to your studio to lay down a vocal track, they will need a pair of headphones for the backing track, while you'll also need to listen in on another pair, hence two sockets. During the past six months or so, I've tried several audio interfaces ranging from £200 up to around £2,000. Some I loaned for a few days, others I bought and then returned after a few days also. I also read loads of reviews on many different mates and models and watched hours upon hours of reviews and tutorials on YouTube too. Based on all this reading, watching, researching and hands-on experience for testing and evaluation purposes, I narrowed it down to just three and then after careful consideration, I narrowed it down to just two, both coincidentally by the same company. These are the Antelope Audio Discrete 4 Synergy Core, which I've got right here, which comes in at around £879 on average, depending where you shop. And the other is the Antelope Audio model called the Zen Go, which costs around £450. I personally went with the Discrete 4 Synergy, but I can highly recommend them both, and I'll go into more detail on them shortly. Yes, I'll agree, there are cheaper audio interfaces out there, many very good ones, but there are some not so good ones too. I found that certain manufacturers' claims on their spec sheets didn't always bear out in the real world testing. Noise floor and gain output are just a few examples. After buying a Focusrite Claret 4 Pre, for example, I ended up moving it on as I found that it didn't quite have enough headroom with its mic gain output to drive an Electrovoice RE20 dynamic microphone as effectively as I would have liked. And I also know a few people who've had some reliability issues with some of Focusrite's more budget audio interfaces. This is in any way a Focusrite bash as they make some excellent audio interfaces, but the sonic quality that I've managed to squeeze out of them over the years didn't quite match up to say a universal audio or an antelope audio model. And for me, it's all about the audio quality first and foremost, and then the quality of the AD converters, the preamps, the gain level, and the accuracy of the meters, and so on and so forth. How many inputs and outputs, the build quality. Anyway, the mic pre's on the Antelope Audio are discrete class A, and not many audio interfaces in this price range have mic pre's like this. Same for the AD converters, they're top notch, and at the end of the day, Antelope Audio are well known for their top sound quality and performance. Oh, and as a bonus, they use real time FX, so you can build up plugins without taxing your computer's CPU. Also, with other audio interfaces, each plugin would add more latency, but the Antelope doesn't work like that. Instead, it treats all plugins as one where latency is concerned, so low latency performance is amazing. There's also another consideration. Given that pretty much all audio interfaces are software driven these days, and many have their own plugin options, you have to look at that too. How easy is it to configure the audio interface in software? Are the bundled plugins just a gimmick, or are they high quality and usable? And most importantly, will they improve the quality, add or take away from any given song that you're working on? This was one of the deciding factors that turned me onto Antelope Audio. The software is so easy to use and configure, and Antelope Audio also makes some of the very best plugins that you can buy. For example, their guitar emulations are just incredible. 
Antelope plugins, in my opinion, sound just as good, if not better, than the UAD ones. And I've owned a Universal Audio Apollo 8 with loads of UAD plugins. For me, I can't see the point in spending all that extra money on UAD hardware and plugins when Antelope Audio do the same thing, often better, and for much less money. At the end of the day, you're not going to get the true hardware sound from any FX plugin, no matter who makes it. So debating over minuscule differences is pointless, and that time would be better spent creating music and just getting on with recording. But rest assured, the Antelope FX plugins are super high quality, pure sounding, crystal clear, and incredibly accurate when compared to the hardware outboard equivalents. And I find that they just stack up better in the mix, and their analog emulations, EQs, and compressors are some of the very best in the world today. If you can't afford or don't want to spend £875 for the discrete 4 that I've got here, then have a look at the Zen Go model instead, which comes in at around half the price, at about £450. There is no audible quality difference between these two, and if I'm honest, the only reason I went with the discrete 4 was because I prefer all the controls, the display and sockets to be on the front, with other sockets on the back, so I can place it directly underneath my computer. In comparison, the Zen Go has the main dial and buttons and display on the top, so it has to be on your desktop where you can see and get to the dials and buttons. But if this isn't an issue for you, then go for the Zen Go, because it's by far one of the best audio interfaces at any price.